Hello there. Well, here we are. December 21st, 2012. The end of several cycles. Big one being, of course, the Mayan prediction. And I'm out here in uh, beautiful Lake Marino um, near Campo, California, which is about 10 miles from the Mexican border. I don't know if you can see it or not, but uh, here's the uh, lake behind me there. You can sort of see it. <laughs> it's definitely uh, fall here, been fall here. No leaves on the trees, but uh, it's nice out. It's probably about 63 degrees. And we got Wookie with me. There's Wookie. Let's do something with Wookie there. Where's Wookie? Yeah, there's Wookie. And here I am. Videoing myself. There's Wookie. Hey, say hello to the camera, Wookie. Say hello to the camera. <laughs> there she is. Oh, okay, get her daily scratch. Anywho. <laughs> Anyway, I thought this would be an appropriate time to do a video blog on now. how I ended up by, at 2012, and the planet didn't blow up, nothing happened, that I didn't ever think would happen, uh, actually, but it all started for me shortly after I got out of Scientology back in 83, came up here or it came up, not here, but to Portland, Oregon. I'd spent the last 25 years there, just moved down here last year, but um, 83 was a big year for me. I escaped from the Scientology cult and made it up to Portland. And uh, oddly, about 10 years went by before I ever ran into another Scientologist, which was fine with me at the time. <laughs> now I'm over it, but man, it was, Scientology was good for me for a metaphysical Marines, I guess. That's the way I look at it. Anyway, uh, I first I heard about the Mayan stuff, of course, was with uh, Jose Arguelles in uh, 1987. We put out the book, a uh, famous book uh, called The Mayan Factor, which sort of got everything rolling in terms of not only the Mayan, the Mayan prophecies of the uh, Mayan calendar, but the whole harmonic convergence thing started with Jose Arguelles. And uh, I remember in 87, uh, we had, I was with my partner and wife at the time, uh, Didi, and we had a whole bunch of crystals that we got from our friend Dharma Bob, who would take regular trips, regular trips to uh, Thailand and Europe. Hi, Mr. Ranger. And uh, so bring back a bunch. And so we took about, oh gee, I don't know, 200 uh, quartz crystals up to the Mount Hood wilderness, about 50 miles east of Portland, on this beautiful night. It was the night of the Harmonic Convergence in 1987, as you may recall. I can't remember the date. I think it was August, some end of August, August 17th, I think. Anyway, we planted those suckers in the ground. There was uh, me and Dee Dee and her daughter and our friend and, their, and her two children. We spent the night out, up there, camped, and the star, it was a new moon or at least the moon wasn't up, because I remember the stars were incredible. But, uh, so that kind of launched us off. We ended up getting, uh, there was a board game that went along with the, uh, with the book, and uh, so we were trying to play that. It was extremely complicated, as I recall, and we had our, we were just really into it. So, uh, and we hooked up with the uh, local 
Mayan folk people too. Uh, there was a huge contingent in Portland. Jeez, uh, I don't know, maybe a couple hundred, a couple hundred uh, Mayan calendar nerds, <laughs> which is what we were. So, um, uh, so time went on. We developed a very interesting relationship with some people. I went to a couple of events. Saw Jose Arguelles uh, speak in person. I think it was about 1989 or 90. And uh, then it sort of faded out until about 1996, uh, 95. I discovered the internet. And. Uh, 96, I heard of Terrence McKenna, the uh, psychedelic successor, in my opinion, to Timothy Leary, uh, who had come up with an interesting uh, theory uh, that he called Time Wave Zero. And he developed a computer program where you could run uh, the program and it would show you the progression of increasing novelty. He had two, he had a dichotomy of habit and novelty. So if things get into a traditional pattern or, or establish a pattern, that's habit. But if something comes in to interrupt the pattern, that's novelty. And so he figured out a way to uh, map novelty by using the I Ching. And what he would do is he ran the I Ching hexagrams through a computer program that just kept uh, quickly changing, you know, mapping the changes as the, as the hexagrams went by, you know, really quickly. And then he figured out that by using that, he could compare it against history. He came up with a graph. <laughs> he could compare it against history. And uh, it fit. So that if, you, if he used December 21st, 2012 as the end, and he put the at the maximum novelty is what he had decided it was and then put that against history it matched up all the way back and novelty being the point where there was new breakthroughs or new inventions and habit being where there was a lot of uh, tradition a lot of habitual behaviors and, and so the graph kind of basically went like this as descending into novelty so so I really got into that I thought that was a great concept and he believed and I think rightly so it was a unique take and something that was kind of missed by science although many people have said that uh, nature's whole thrust is toward novelty is toward the unique you know you can look at anything and it looks like it's gotten more complicated as it evolves. He made the point that, you know, first you start out with, uh, you know, the Big Bang, where everything's simple, you know, it's light, dark, boom, atoms, you know, and then eventually everything, you know, develops faster and faster until you end up at the maximum point of novelty where everything is the most complicated or complex with humans and you know, that whole map of humanity. And so, uh, anyway, uh, so I had my own thoughts on it. But, and then since then, I think that was 1996, and so, and I heard him a couple times on Art Bell. You might want to look it up, it's on the internet. He's been, a, Art Bell was a big fan of Terrence McKenna. Um, but Terrence McKenna was also, is a big leader in the um, uh, psychedelic um, Entheon. Um, movement, of which I've had some experience in the past, but uh, anyway, he, uh, Terrence McKenna passed away, I think in 2010, I think, but he left this legacy of uh, the time wave zero and, uh, you know, the uh, his belief in this book called Food of the Gods that uh, the ingestion of mushrooms was responsible for the development of language in humans because uh, psychedelics, uh, specifically psilocybin, uh, uh, language centers of the brain. So, anyway. so then, uh, you know, I 
his point was that it could be true, although you know he there was some discussion about this, but it could be true that December twenty first, uh, twenty twelve at noon, which was about an hour ago, um, the uh, the world of the universe would uh, reach maximum novelty, and so and after that point, then. Uh, there was a discussion as to well, what would that look like, or, or how would people be, you know, and how would that how would that uh, happen, you know? And so all that speculation was uh, brought out in terms of you know the, the obvious thing to go to. If it's end of a calendar, then it's a time for a catastrophe, you know, the ap apocalyptic. Um, uh, view of the end of the world, you know, which is you know, throughout human history, it's, it's a huge subject, you know, it's called, in fact, there's a word for it, it's called eschatology, the study of end times. And so uh, I kind of made a study of it myself, and and, and uh, everything from, you know, the planet blowing up, you know, there's uh, another really cool, I can't remember who came up with it, or the cool theory, which I thought was, was great, was that at that time, uh, the sun would uh, blast out... Um, uh, a, uh, uh, a huge ejection of, of solar material at the exact moment that the planet lines up precisely with the galactic center, which is right now. So over the next three days, it's as exact as it's ever going to get, ever, you know, in the 26,000 years. So, and that's right now. So, I think I can feel it. <laughs> Anyway, the, uh, uh, and so, and as a result of this solar ejection, at the same time as the exact lining up of everything, including, you know, there's also planets lined up, and everything's lined up right now, then uh, it, would, it would trigger a, a, a huge discharge of DMT into the human brain on a mass basis, and everybody for about 10 minutes would go into this DMT trip. And uh, DMT, of course, is extremely powerful psychedelic. The, the brain makes it, but you, but in tiny, tiny amounts. But if you take, you know, psychedelics such as ayahuasca or, uh, you know, some forms of, you know, heavy LSD trip, any of that produces DMT in the brain, and so uh, uh, and it causes a psychedelic experience. So he figured. So this person, whoever came up with this idea, I can't remember who it is. I'll remember in a second. Uh, has figured that well then everybody's going to have this DMT trip for 10 minutes and it will transform humanity you know <laughs> so who knows maybe we're on the trip right now I, I kind of feel psychedelic right now just talking about it uh, anyway uh, so the uh, um, I finally started coming down to the fact that i you know, look, it's a it's a calendar, and it's an end of a cycle. It's an end of lots of big cycles, and so I ended up with deciding that probably I don't know, pretty recently, maybe a couple of years ago, that what it really meant was we have a choice. Um, it's like um, a train's going by, and you know what time it's coming by. There's two trains. One's headed toward the Oblivion Express, or, or we call it the Oblivion Express, and the other one is called the Train to Heaven. And the trains come by simultaneously, and they arrive at uh, noon on December 12th, uh, 2012. So, um, or December 21st, 2012. And so, you can make a choice which train do you want to get on, you know. And so, I, I think, you know, if you take the Train to Heaven, then you have everything... All the universe is now going on to this new cycle, and it's a way to just say goodbye to the old, bypassed, just to the old way you were, and welcome to the new person, the new way to be. And so, um, and I, I stuck with that, and I think that's a, that's, a, that's a good way of looking at it. You know, it's like, you know, a, a, you know, humans have a calendar year, 
ends on December 31st, you know, and everybody gets their New Year's resolutions. Well, this is like an, a new eon resolution to be in the light, to be love, to give love, to accept love, to be love. And so that everyone who can make that choice has the universe behind them. And I think the universe is always behind anybody who decides to be love or light. But this is like a in time thing, you know, so the forces of time and the forces of nature um, are also tracking in that same way. So, and I, and I've seen, and I see this too, um, you know, people who, you know, decide to be negative, just get more and more negative, you know, a person who decides to be positive just gets more and more positive, you know, I mean, happiness is a choice, and that's actually scientifically proven. You make a choice to be happy. You make a choice to be sad. Um, and, and really, you know, what does it take to be happy? A choice. Same thing with uh, light or dark, you know, uh, glass half full, glass half empty, you know, I mean, it's, the, we, all, we know all this. But the big struggle is just with the ego who would pre prefer the drama, who would prefer the negativity. Not that that's bad, but uh, the, the, the ego has that tendency to focus in on that which separates person. If we didn't have egos, they, we wouldn't be separated. And because when you put away the ego, then we find a huge um, and intense um, ability to connect with others. And, um, and so uh, I think the experience of the ego down through the millennium and down through all of human history should teach us that we can choose uh, and, that, and that's the bottom line. You have a choice. So that's what this day is all about. It's a choice. It's a choice to be who you are, which is basic love. And, and so in honor of that truth, and in honor of this lovely day, nature and all the people who believe in it, who are part of it, uh, and that's why I did this video, but I'm probably heavily editing it. <laughs> Signing off.